What's going on YouTube? Connor on Shane here. Today we're going over a nice little market update. Just gonna jump right into the prices here because obviously if you've been in crypto, you know what's going on. The markets have been going ridiculous the last two days. Bitcoin has shot up because of BlackRock and the potential ETF coming up. But there have been rumors now that actually the ETF itself is not even going to happen. So the markets are doing some weird things. And the reason why I have Dex Screener up on wrapped Bitcoin is because <clears throat> my trading view is a little bit slow. And I want to be able to actually show you guys just some charts. Now, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of simple TA today. Just how to look at these charts, how to kind of read them. Uh, we'll give you something like a little bit of simple, simple technical analysis. So we're going to start with support and resistance, which is probably the most common, easy to understand um, technical analysis. Technical analysis is the basis of reading charts and getting a grip on how to look at a chart, you know, and feeling comfortable with which way a market's moving and just getting a grip on understanding the potential direction of an asset. So what I usually want to start with with support and resistance is um, it's kind of how, where you're going to be aiming to draw support and resistance. So support is a level in which an asset is coming down on and wants to bounce upon. And then resistance is almost like a ceiling. It's where prices try to push up, push up. And usually a lot of times it'll fail and sometimes it'll break through. So I look at support and resistance kind of like um, kind of like a house. You've got the ceiling of a house and you got the floor. And picture yourself in the middle of a three-story house. Say, for example, right here we got, you know, why don't we just draw it out? It'll look nice and clean. Let's see if we can find that pen tool. Got a brush. Perfect. So we got the house here. This is the middle floor that we're sitting in. This is Bitcoin, by the way. So this is the house. So we got a window right here. We'll do this. And we got the door. And then one more big window. So that's kind of clean. I'm not going to lie. So with this house, when you got support and resistance, <clears throat> the main thing you want to find when it comes to this, so this is on a daily, like a very long term chart. This goes all the way back to July. Is you want to look for areas in which price has come down into the same general area as it has in the past, you know, and a lot, it depends on like who is charting and a lot of different people, but a lot of people will chart some of their TA like months back, even years, depending on the asset and just depending on the person themselves. Um, me personally, I like to, I only go a few months back, you know, you don't need to go years back unless you really want to focus on like very long term price movements and price swings, which in a lot of cases is very, very important as well. Uh, but anyways, we'll go back to the house here. So say for example, this was over the last few months. So Bitcoin is in a range here, which is when price is consistently bouncing in between support and, res and resistance zones. But obviously you can see here because of the ETF, it drove a ton of volume, a lot of price action. Price actually decided to finally break out of this range so it broke through the ceiling which is the resistance and the reason why i have these white lines here <clears throat> is because if i shut this off you know a simple resistance is like you can draw it you can use the literal crosshairs on the mouse here you know prices come into this area here like how many times just i, I consider this one time if you zoomed out on like a 15 minute price came up Bounced, tried again, failed, tried again, failed again. This could be four times if you could zoom in on a chart here. But anyways, this was resistance and support was down here. And so this chart's going to look a little bit different than actual Bitcoin. Just because this is wrapped Bitcoin. It's basically Bitcoin on top of the ETH network. So, I mean, it looks pretty similar. And obviously it doesn't go back as far. But this is just for a clean example of support and resistance, like I was saying. And we're going to go to a couple assets, and I'm just going to show you guys how to draw it very simple, how I usually draw it. 
And so with support and resistance, I know a lot of people you probably have watched, oh, you know, they'll use like the most thin trend lines. You know, a lot of them will zoom in all the way. They'll try to get the tip of this wick here. You know, but a lot of people, some of them will draw big, big boxes instead. And as far as for TA, it's very independent. Like you, however you want to draw it is how you do it. So over the last couple of years, I've been most comfortable with drawing, I call it a zone rather than just a line. So this zone here is just a general area. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you can draw a zone I'm like, well, let's see if I can find that tool again that I use right here. You can draw a zone pretty much anywhere where price is going to just generally react. <clears throat> and so the, the reason why this is a great, I guess, zone that you can put for like a long term time frame zone is because price has come up, kind of touched it right here, rejected, came back up. This acted as a heavy resistance and then it flipped into support over the long term. So this area here, price has interacted with it for, you know, a long time. It's interacted with it multiple times. You know, you know, it's like when you zoom out, take everything off the chart, you know, you can kind of see where, like if you put your crosshairs again, it's like, where's price come to touch and come anywhere around? You know, not every single example is going to be perfect. You know, and I'm, let's just pull up a random Let's just do Uniswap because that's a coin that I bring up a lot. And we're just going to draw like simple support and resistance. And so the reason I want to tell you guys this is because <clears throat> before I actually got into crypto is I started learning about Forex and how to chart on, um, you know, trading Forex pairs as in trading like the US dollar versus the Euro, you know, the British pound against the Australian dollar. You know, when you're dealing with Forex, 95% of it is technical analysis. Not actually, but when it comes to trading, I focused heavily on the technicals, which is charting. And when it comes to charting, you need to understand the basis of how the market moves and learning all these little tips and tricks, especially support and resistance, trend lines. You know, there's a bunch of different type of um, technicals you can learn. But that was like one of the most like hardest thing for me to understand. But once I got it, it gave me the most solid grip on the market that I can get. So anyways, with Uniswap here, you know, like we're just looking at, again, this only goes back to June, which I actually don't know why. But, you know, just from a chart perspective here, you know, what is price done? Like we can just look at it. Nice and simply, it looks like price has been driven down heavily back in June, came back up. You know, it looks like it's tried to potentially come back up, but it keeps getting shot down. You know, it wicked back down where? It wicked down into this general area again. You know, and like I was saying, you don't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you don't need to draw like this beautiful little line. Like when you draw, Support and resistance, for example, you don't have to hit every single wick. It doesn't have to be perfect because then, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, if I want to hit every wick, it's, it's kind of angled like this. And, you know, you can do that, too. I just prefer more bigger general zones because price is never going to react exactly with your pinpointed price. You know, if it reacts in a general zone, you know, that's how I treat it. I treat it as a big big area for price to actually like react in you know you could draw it as an angled box here an angled zone but for me personally i just do it a lot more simple as well and so like i said we're gonna just put a decent sized box and so what, what does this tell me right now this is telling me that momentum is just heavily to the downside here you know i'm gonna draw this here out this looks like price has just been coming down you know bounced heavily off of the support zone, which is the zone down here. You know, it's come up, but it's continued to make um, lower, higher lows, lower lows, lower lows are down here, higher lows. It's continued to make lower, higher lows. I always confuse this. I understand what I'm saying, but I confuse this every time. 
So it continues to make higher lows as in it's continuing to make lower points. And to me, this momentum looks like it's potentially to the downside. But in crypto, you never know which way it's going to go. This is just from my own perspective of just looking at it. And again, with technicals too, this is even for trend lines. You know, you can draw trend lines the same way as support and resistance. You can draw single individual literal lines, or you can do boxes <clears throat> as in like big zones. You know, for me, it's like this. I usually, I wouldn't even need to put a trend line most of the time, but you can, you can pinpoint price. You can see like, all right, well, it's in this general area, you know, it's hit this as resistance, come back down. You can see price trickling down and it looks like it's going into a formation, which this right here is a trading pattern in itself, you know, and every single trading pattern is something you got to learn as well. You don't have to. But it helps because it'll give you another general direction. And in my opinion, normally if you'd see this on any sort of chart, my recommendation would be just continue to watch it until it breaks and come comes back to retest somewhere, whether it's down. Because sometimes it'll come right back up, shoot up, and then trickle back down and come right back and go up. Like, you know, it all matters where it breaks out of this, but all these patterns coincide with your support and resistance, you know? So it's very individual based. Everyone's going to do it different, but all you got to learn with support and resistance is you just got to look at a general area on the chart. And again, this is on the daily, you know, we can zoom in like, you know, if we want to zoom in more, <clears throat> like we can do it here. You know, I don't really focus on very short term time frames too often unless I'd be trading, but I don't really trade like that too often. But the same thing is we're just gonna look for a general area where prices reacted pretty heavily. And like right here, I'm honestly not seeing too great of a, an area to put, but for like a local low, you could put right here. Why? Because price interacted with this area, yeah, it broke through, but it came back up and it, it reacted with the zone again. You could put this as a zone, you know, you could even do like, we even just like continue this. Like you could do this as well, but yeah, there's always little tips and tricks to it. <clears throat> like this, I would say is not the best because there's no rhyme or reason to it. Cause it held here, you know, it broke through acted as resistance came back up. Like to me, it's not very clear. And that's something else that you got to understand when you're charting. Because usually if something's not very clear to you, there's no need to actually, you know, put the chart in. Just skip it or just wait until something else becomes very clear. Like I said, like this long-term trend and this long-term level here. So for right now, let's just wanted to show you guys a little bit of technicals, like with support and resistance. Um, you know, I, th I think it's super important to know just for the markets in general. I think when you're dealing with very speculative and uh, momentum based assets like crypto, a lot of times technicals are not going to go in the direction that you want to go in just because a lot of FOMO, a lot of money just floods in out of nowhere, which goes kind of against what technicals do, but <clears throat> technical indicators and charting is, it's a great way just to get a grasp on the general direction of the market just to know where it's going to be headed in the long term or short term. So at the moment, that's all I got for you guys right now. I'll see you in the next video.